Hey, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini. I post weekly videos right here on my YouTube channel and in this video I'm sharing with you my review of my brand new Juki MO1000 serger that features this really cool easy threader technology. Alright, so let's talk about my brand new Juki Serger. It's the MO1000 and it features this really cool easy threader technology. If you've been looking at sergers lately, you may have seen another manufacturer that has a similar technology. It basically, the machine really threads itself. It's kind of crazy. Even when I first did it the first time, I'm like, that's it and I can use it now. And it's awesome. So that's really why I bought it for. I didn't really need a serger, but I bought it for the technology. And I really think that the threading part of the upper and lower looper is the most daunting part of owning a serger. So if you're in the market for a serger and you do a lot of garment sewing and maybe you sell finished goods in an online shop or at craft shows, check this machine out. You're going to love it. So let's quickly go over what comes right uh, in the box when you buy it, right? You get the machine, you comes with the little thing here to set up all your, your cones. It comes with a little waste basket. It's nice and big. It's a little clunky for me. It's like a little awkward to like clip it back into place. I kind of have to like jiggle it around a little. So that's the only downside to that, but it's nice and big and open. So I like that. Then it also comes with your user manual. It comes with a DVD that shows you how to thread it. Not that you need it to, you're going to see how easy it is. A couple of spool caps, a looper threader, some nets if you're using like smaller spools or if you have a problem with the thread coming off too quick off the cones and then some oil of course for your sewing machine or your serger maintenance. It also comes with a really simple plastic dust cover to keep the dust off your machine. Nothing too fancy and that's pretty much it. It just comes with the one presser foot that allows you to do your regular two, three, four uh, thread serger or overlock stitches. You can do rolled hems. It has an adjustable differential feed. It has pretty much the basic stuff that a new serger nowadays would have. But let's get started on showing you how to thread this thing. So we'll remove the waste basket here, set this aside. And right down here, I just put my finger here and this is going to allow me to open this up and access where all the threading and all the looper stuff is. If you look on the inside of the cover here, you basically have a built-in accessory kit. All your stuff is here. A set of needles, your little screwdriver to take off and on your needles to change them a little lint brush, and also some tweezers, which I already took out, but they go right in here in this slot. And this comes in handy too to pull your thread because sometimes it can be tough to get your fingers in there, but I'll leave it out because I'll be using this. There's also a color-coded diagram here in case you forget how to thread it, but it is so easy. So let's actually jump right into threading it. I'm going to do something that is dreaded by many who have sergers. You know that the number one thing you don't want somebody to do is come by and cut your threads after you've threaded your serger, right? Because now it's like, oh, a nightmare to get it threaded again. Let me show you. Let me get rid of these threads that were in here just by stitching them out a little. All right. So the only threads I have on my machine, let me see. Okay, so there they go. I have all my threads out of the serger. So let's start from scratch. I've loaded four threads, uh, four cones here of thread. And I usually like to do it that way just because I'm usually using the serger to secure a seam, reinforce it, and that fourth thread for me really gives me a more secure uh, overlock uh, seam, whatever it is that I'm using it for, right? So let's open this up because we're going to need to thread this here. And I like that this type of serger doesn't require you to thread it in a specific method. Sometimes they'll tell you start here, then this one, and then your needles. Here it doesn't matter because they're all going independently of one another. So I'm going to kind of floss this in between my tension discs here, bring it down. There's a little groove right there. And then there's a thread guide right there. Now you'll see here, I'm doing this first one. The color I think it says in the manual red, but it's more like a purple color on the machine, but it's the one furthest to the right. And I am going to, I pulled out some thread just to give myself some slack. And now I'm going to grab it close to the tip and just insert it in the little hole that's right next to the picture for the one that I'm threading. Now, I'm going to engage this. This is when I, what is going to lock everything in place so that the easy threader can work. So I'm going to flip this up and I'm gonna turn my hand wheel until there's a little mark on the hand wheel and then it needs to match up with the mark that's right next to it on the sewing machine. So I'm gonna turn the hand wheel towards me and you're gonna hear a click right there. 
that means that the easy threader system here is engaged. So I have my thread in the little hole and I just like to kind of push my fingers, slide it up there and that helps it go in further. Just make sure that it's in there. Then I'm gonna press the air on button and that's it, all right? And so it's kind of clunky to get my hand in there so you can just grab your um, tweezers and just guide that thread to the back because we want all our threads going towards the back of the machine. All right, so that one's done. Now we're gonna repeat the same thing with the next one. So I thread it back there. Just follow all your thread guides, put it right through here. Another thread guide there again, pull the thread out to give you some slack. And now I'm gonna put it in the little hole and just kind of push it in a little bit with my finger. And again, make sure it's not caught on anything. That's it. I mean, the thread just flew out right here and it's threaded the other one. So now that I've threaded the upper and lower loopers, I am going to disengage the air threader now because now we're ready to just uh, thread our needles and start getting ready to stitch. So I can pull this back down. I like to line up the line. There's a mark on the hand wheel and you line it up with the mark on the side of the sewing machine. That lets you know when the needles are at their highest point. And on any sewing machine or serger, the needles need to be at the highest point in order for you to engage any on automatic needle threader. So that's what we're gonna do here because we're gonna move on and thread our needles. So I'm first gonna start off by doing the right needle. So we're following it down here. I'm gonna come under this and follow the green. The green is telling me it needs to go right over here. And then there's a little like kind of curly tailed guide right above the right needle. So I know that the thread for the right needle goes through there. Now we're gonna use the automatic needle threader. So to do that, we have to come here and engage this little thing on whether we're now threading the left or the right needle. I'm doing the right, so I push it to the right. It just goes left or right, depending on what needle you're gonna thread next. So I'll push it in this way so it can go to the right because that's the one I wanna thread. And we're gonna pull down on this. And so you see that it engages it right where the needle is. And now I'm just going to put my thread right through there on a little hook. And when I let it go, it pulls the thread right through my needle. I usually will take the uh, tweezers and just pull the thread back. Okay, and so that needle is threaded and push your threads towards the back before you start sewing. And I'll usually go back in from the back side of the machine and just pull everything so I know nothing is getting tangled. So that's my right needle, now we'll do the left. Same exact process. Make sure that you're flossing it in through those tension discs so it's catching there. Pop the little needle threader thing to the left because now we need to thread the left needle. Again, thread it through the little curly Q little guide there that it has right above your needle. And now I bring this down. I see that it's engaged to the left needle now. Make sure that I'm putting it where I need to, right on the little th automatic needle threader hook. Then I can bring it up and there it is. My second needle has been threaded. So you should have three or four, depending on however many threads you're using to start sewing with, going towards the back of your machine. You don't want anything going forward. There's a few other things here. This little knob, you can push it all the way forward for your regular serging needs. And if you're doing rolled hems, you push it all the way back. This one here is to adjust how far the blade is cutting from your fabric. So you can adjust that. I keep it about 1.5. And then here, this little thing, you can put it down to disengage the blade. So if you wanna use the serger without it having to cut your fabric, you can do that here as well. Just note that when you bring it back up, the blade is not gonna pop up until you take a few stitches. So don't freak out and think it's broken. It's fine there. So I'll bring it back up. When I do a few stitches, it'll pop back up. Make sure the easy threader is disengaged and we are ready to start serging. So we'll close this back up, put out our little waste basket thing. Okay, that's in place. And so my settings here for regular stitching, pretty much, you know, my woven fabrics and things, I have them all at fours going across the board. And usually you wanna have it between three and five, but you can totally adjust this. And the user manual includes a full chart of tons of different stitches, uh, all kinds of different things that you may wanna use in different projects, all right? So let's start uh, trying it out on a couple different fabrics. Let me cut this chunk off here. Make sure this is on. So now we'll start. I have my stitch length over here at about a 2.5 and the differential feed is on end for normal. That differential feed is gonna help you with fabrics when they pucker or they're getting wavy, you can adjust it to make it lay nicer and flat. But for most of your needs, this will work just fine. So you can see gorgeous, gorgeous serger stitch. Nice and neat on both sides. And this was just regular quilting cottons. 
So now let's move on to something a little bit heftier. I have here some home decor weight. It's still 100% cotton. And whenever you're testing out stitches on any new machine, make sure that you're doubling up the fabric because that is how you would have it when you're using it for your projects, right? So you want to make sure that it looks how it would. So that's stitched nicely. Through that, I don't have any puckering seams. Everything is laying nice and flat. Now let's test it on some really lightweight jersey. This is almost like a tissue jersey. This fabric is really lightweight, you can see that. And I'm going to stitch it right here. Two layers, of course. Really nice. I'm really impressed with the stitch quality of this serger and the fact that even on this lightweight jersey, it didn't pucker it up. I didn't even have to touch the differential feet. It did the stitches really, really nicely, okay? And if you feel like it's rolling on you, you can always adjust the cut depth of the blade. So now let's move on to some bulkier projects because when the winter rolls around, sometimes you wanna be working on fleece projects. You can whip these up for kids, like little hoodies and garments like that, sweatshirts, and you don't wanna have a sewing machine and then have to finish the edges. I like to make projects like that just on a serger. Even though the fleece doesn't fray, it just gives it a more nice finished look and I'm stitching a seam and I'm finishing off the edges with a more professional look at the same time. Again, fleece stretches, right? We all know that. And I didn't get any puckering or any wavy seams with the stitch quality of the serger. Now the fleece is pretty bulky, but let's give a try to two layers of denim, just so you can see what all different types of fabrics and different types of projects you'll be able to make with this serger. Now one thing to note, there is no little fluff sticking out here at the top. Usually on sergers that are trying to cut two layers of denim, you'll have like little bits that don't really get cut because it's quite thick and the fabric is really dense. Again, this denim is a stretch denim. This is from an old pair of jeans. No wavy or puckering seams. I don't have any extra fluff here. The blade is nice and sharp. It cut through everything super easily. So overall, I'm really, really impressed with the stitch quality of the serger, the way it works through a variety of fabrics. You saw I didn't even mess with any of the tension and I went from really heavy denim and even fleece to a really light tissue jersey, okay? So you can pretty much use it for all kinds of stuff. So now that I can thread it really easily, thanks to the Easy Threader technology, I think I'm gonna be using the serger a lot more. So I think you guys can look forward to seeing some serger tutorials coming from me in the future. For more information on the Juki MO1000 or any other Juki sewing machines, make sure to contact Tim at So Many Things. Tell him I sent you. So I'm really happy with my purchase of the new Juki MO1000. And that's it for this video review. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you hit this video with a thumbs up below, share it across the different social media sites, and don't forget to click the subscribe button so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.